This is the ear tool. It's what we call an audible electromagnetic interference detector. You can use it to listen to the EMI coming from all your electronics. Here we're listening to all the different pulsing coming from a phone charger. Now listen to what quick charge sounds like. Even low power microcontrollers emit a ton of EMI. It's very fascinating to hear the different feedback coming from the controller when moving a mouse cursor or using a scroll wheel. We mainly designed the ear tool to help us fix computers, phones, and TVs. For example, we can use this to tell if a CPU or microcontroller is doing any processing or if it's just sitting there burning up or turning on and off rapidly. This can be really handy when you're fixing electronic devices like a cell phone. For example, if the screen doesn't light up or show any signs of life, you can point the ear tool near the CPU or other parts of the board and determine if the phone is even turning on and working. Cell phones have several systems running that make the phone work. Using this tool you can hear all of that interference, and it changes depending on what you're doing on the phone. While an inductor sensor isn't a microphone and cannot pick up any ambient sound, it can pick up the interference the voice coil of the speaker creates and amplify it. We have another landing. This is the fourth landing of this vehicle. Even the vibration motor in the phone is also picked up by the tool. A drill motor creates a ton of interference, and the ear tool barely needs to come close before you can hear the noise from the motor in the controller. Here's a car remote also generating EMI. On this laptop you can distinctly hear a change in the pulses from the CPU when opening the start menu or when opening an app. When shutting down the laptop there's a bunch of different pulses coming from various areas And when the computer shuts completely off, then it's dead silent. This could be very useful to tell if a device is truly off, or if it might still be partially on and transmitting wireless data. This is our beacon that Google sent us a year after we opened our store. It's apparently used in their beacon project to help businesses let cell phones and other Bluetooth low energy devices know when they're in proximity to our store. This is one of the ways Google knows when you visit a store and send that notification to leave a review. I never knew this thing was still working two years later until I probed it with the ear tool and heard a faint clicking sound from the device. Since there's no replaceable battery, there's really no other way to tell if the beacon still works without destroying the casing. This is one of the many ways the ear tool is a great tool to have as an electronics hobbyist, technician, or an educator. The ear tool is currently sold as a kit which you can find linked in the video description. Also the tool is completely open source which means you can download the original schematics with a full list of the parts and where you can buy them to build it yourself. Now let's get into building the ear tool. Again, all the parts used are linked to a GitHub page in the video description. Starting on the back side of the board, we'll add solder to the left pads for each of the surface mount components. Then we'll solder the left side of the components to the left pads. When you solder the component on one side, this makes it easier to solder the right side, keeping the component flat on the board. With the surface mount components installed, we'll begin soldering the through-hole components. One method to keep the components from falling off when flipping the board over is to bend the solder wire over the top of the board and hold the component with your finger while pushing the board into the area you're trying to solder. I do this with the first pin, that way the component is in place and I can solder the rest of the pins.
After soldering all the components and clipping the excess, we need to add some solder to the speaker and battery pads. The speaker can be adhered to the back of the board, then solder the wires to the speaker pads. And then the 9 volt battery clip can be soldered to the battery pads. Next there are two battery compartment separators that go near the center of the casing to keep the battery from rattling around. Make sure they are in the position to fit the battery and also not interfere with other parts of the board. Then adhere the felt strip to the battery compartment. And finally connect the inductor to the terminals connector using a screwdriver. It's always a good idea to test the tool before assembling it into the enclosure. Insert the four screws and you're done. The top piece that came with the enclosure is not needed for this project. We hope you found this project interesting and helpful. And if you've built one yourself, please make sure to take pictures of it and post it on Twitter at Harbin Repairs. Thanks for watching.